I will record her. So have you ever recorded? Yeah. I'll be like, oh, Gabby. <laughs> it's like, okay, you were I right. You, about. you were right. <laughs> you know, singing in the singing in the car is actually illegal right now. No, I was like, I'm the most <laughs> gullible person ever. Like, no, you I can too. literally tell me like cats are illegal in Florida now, and no, I'd be like, no, no way, <laughs> I have a cat. Like, <laughs> what do I do? Well, hello. Hi. Hi. So I want to start the podcast off with this saying. Um, it says. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And I have not been doing that. <laughs> and we're recording. It's 9.20 a.m. And I sound like it's like 6 a.m. I know. I've been up since yeah. 5. Yeah, same. You two I are built different. Early. <laughs> I think it, I've always been like that. My dad um, is a triathlete. And he would wake up at like 4 in the morning to go run. And then go biking. And then go swimming. And then to start work by like 9 a.m. And I've like whenever I was younger, I would always hear him like running around and stuff in the in the house, like getting dressed and stuff. So I was just hopped on up. it. Yeah, yeah, I've always just been was, like that. I was like always the opposite. I used to sleep in really late until like you know Proverbs thirty one up before the sun, and I was like, oh man, but God, I'm gonna need your help if <laughs> I, I'm gonna do this. And then as soon as I did that, I I started waking up at like five, like mm-hmm. on the dot. Yeah, really. Yeah, like weird. I was telling. Uh, my best friend Kyle about the podcast I'm having with you too and I was I said how early you guys wake up and that you wanted to record the show in the morning before you had work and everything and he was like oh wow they are religious because like <laughs> religious people wake up so early and they're so that is you know so on funny. the ball yeah, yeah. No, nothing good really happens at night time mm. um, mm. yeah that's yeah. usually how it is I think it depends on your character too like you know depending on your schedule but I do feel like there's a benefit to waking up early because now I feel like I have my entire day to do something, you know, and like I get so much done. Like when I wake up at 10 o'clock or something like that, I'm like, my day is gone. I might as well just go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I, I by like four or five, I'm already kind of like drained throughout mm-hmm. the day. And I just not I love morning. Like I'm just so hyper. I'm so just first thing in the morning. It's just nice. And then after 4 p.m., it's like I don't really want to talk i just want to lay down and like chill i need to get on that i i was on that at one point where i was waking up at like 4 a.m and i would do fasted cardio and then i would start like my work day but it was easy because you'd be tired around 5 p.m and then your day would reset it's just switching your circadian rhythm yeah um welcome back to the wet slap i'm joined by gabby and ari they just started a podcast called she's fruitful it's a faith-based podcast i've known these two girls for a very long time um always been two of my favorite people on earth and it's really interesting seeing them talking to mics now and it's amazing so go watch it after this interview yeah go watch it yeah Aww, that like, so definitely sweet. watch yeah <laughs> that um, so, nice. so why'd you start well really we kind of both just we always had god knocking on our doors you know and i think we both have kind of the same history where we ran from god for a while And especially when it comes into like social media and doing our own thing and getting, you know, attention for the wrong reasons. And there was a day that I saw Gabby for the first time in a really long time. And she was talking about how she just moved back from Miami and like she wants to get back into church. And, you know, we talked about baptism and we're like, let's get you baptized. And after she got baptized, we were like, you know, I want to like have someone that we can keep each other accountable read the bible with and we were like let's meet at a coffee shop and gabby was like you know i have this book study of girls and you know we should invite more people and from there that was like our first ever bible study and so we did that for about six months and we're like you know we're growing i think this is something so good like we kind of felt that reassurance from god and the confidence that we were on the right track and then it led to a podcast in yeah. New York. <laughs> we definitely had um, prodigal seasons that were really loud. And um, I just, we both, like, well, she came first to the faith, I think, two years before me, two, three, like, actually mm-hmm. giving your life to God. Yeah, I was probably, like, 17 and then still not, like, on fire, but I guess really started taking it serious when I was like 20 so yeah like three years ago yeah, yeah. I got saved in July Sweet. And yeah and um <laughs> I think that when we got together the first time I guess like I just knew girls from like the book club that I was doing I was reading John Mark Cromer um Live No Lies and it's just a book like a Christian based book 
and it was really good but um we kind of just faded away like that group and i was like ari i actually know a group of girls that are like love god and everything maybe we can invite them to our first like little bible study or whatever it's gonna be we didn't really mm. have any plan yeah. we just like went yeah. to this little get together like we had our bibles everything um but we started re- like as time went on and we did the we did these like bible studies we were impacting girls with our stories and our experiences and more than i imagined that we would be impacting them um and i i was like i think and i knew a lot of girls from miami that you know are, are like have the morals and everything but they're so skewed away from the world like towards the world like you know everything yeah. on social media standards and everything yeah um they it's like the standard they want to be the standard of social media but they have this moral compass like i did and i'm like i really want to reach to a lot of these girls that have gone through what we've gone through and that's why we started the podcast we're like i think we were we're impacting a lot of Mm. girls and guys um like through our testimony yeah um well you see it you see it all around the internet right now with a lot of these faith-based uh creators and podcasters popping up like george janko he was this guy yeah he's great uh he's doing amazing shout out george congrats Mm -hmm. the tate interview girls gone bible patrick bet david you're, you're killing the game um he came from a place where he always said, oh, I'm a Christian. And then he would display and show the opposite of everything mm. Christianity is supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, which is OK. We're all human. You know, mm-hmm. we're born in the fire. Um, and then there's Girls Gone Bible, who also had this background of not being perfect. And, you know, you probably you got are you two fans of Girls Gone Bible? Yes, I love Yeah. Them. What's mm-hmm. kind of like their backstory? Because I'm there. um so there's the two hosts, Ariel and Angela. Angela, she was like pretty big in acting. She was actually on American Horror Story, like in like one of the, I wouldn't say like the main people, but like the extras in a sense. But she was like, she had a part. And um, the other one was more modeling. And Angela was also a, um, a bottle service girl. And so she was in that scene, the party life. And yeah. she actually, st- she struggled with um, being an alcoholic. And the other one, I think it was just like, really, she was going through really bad heartbreak and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So they were going through really hard seasons and they were praying for a friend, kind of how we were. Yeah. They were praying for a friend, like r- like for months and months. Like, I just need a godly friend because they were surrounded by the world. Like, they were surrounded by people that... Mm um didn't give good advice and and christ-centered advice it was always like very materialistic so they actually had a modeling job together and ariel was crying like crying her eyes out and angela um saw her and she was like we're gonna get i don't know you but we're gonna get through this together and whatever you're going through and they like god just blessed them with so much that is actually so sweet. it is the cutest thing ever i remember being away and uh, <laughs> working at the club yeah, <laughs> as a bottle girl too. And I remember... No way. Yeah. I worked oh, at, yeah, you did tell me that like I briefly. Worked at, I worked at Tear. <laughs> oh, Tear? Yeah. And, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. me too. Oh. <laughs> and um, I remember working there for like two weeks because I couldn't hear anyone. Like, like I couldn't give anybody change because I, first of all, <laughs> I was <laughs> terrible at math. <laughs> I couldn't even (laughs) count the change. And then I was giving everybody the wrong drinks, like, because I couldn't tell which one was juice and which one was, like, Coca-Cola. And I was just giving Mm. everybody, like, juice and the wrong drink. Anyways, all these things. (laughs) (laughs) Not a good bottle girl. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, wow, this is not where I belong. But it's all these things are just kind of show God's grace and how good he is because he lets you stray. He lets you go off and to see the world i don't think you can see the light unless you see the darkness and i think that's like a a really good example of that and going back to even like our podcast and bible study i got to the point where we like didn't have a place to go like we were getting so full i remember like trying to meet with girls at the park and everything and like we wouldn't even fit on the little bench yeah i remember that yeah and the church ended up because i was working there at the time they were like we can give you like a room or something a classroom Mm. and we're like no way (laughs) that's so exciting (laughs) upgrade yeah no it was it was it was really exciting but i can definitely relate to angela Yeah. (laughs) yeah 
Well, congrats to you yeah. guys. And I do think people who've been through it, speaking on it, who have a change of heart, like for me, that's personally kind of what I'm going through right now. I'm I'm mm-hmm. I'm way behind you two, but this is kind of like the first year where I've really had an open eye and open mind, and it's definitely created waves for me. And it's very it frees your brain. I like something you said in one of your one of the podcasts. Um, you read a book. I don't remember the name of the book, but you said like write down your problems and your anxieties, mm-hmm. and then look up where in the Bible it talks about that. And so I did a little bit of that. You and did? I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, these are the answers. Yeah. I'm like, he's right. Yeah. Like, no, it's crazy because, you know, we have whispers all around us, like in the world, telling us one thing, telling us a different thing. Mm-hmm. And then our anxieties, like we think that we have to live up to these materialistic standards that are just so like fleeting. When you have your identity on something so unstable, Mm. your house like it's gonna fall down like the moment i always say this analogy and i I think it's pretty common but like if you have a house built on a foundation of sand the minute that wind blows the house is gonna crash down so i had my identity wrapped around my social media the amount of followers the likes Mm. my appearance and the moment one of if any of those things like went wrong my whole identity who i thought i was went crashing down because my faith was or not my faith my identity was on something so unstable Mm -hmm. and fleeting and kind of how you just mentioned you know you're going through that season of like pruning and kind of getting more into your faith I've noticed that me being in the world like I went through a lot of pain and destruction because a lot of people like I posted like you know, post me looking very happy, but people wouldn't know that I was actually crying myself to sleep while I was posting those videos. But it, you know, you always think about like, why do we have to suffer and go through pain? But pain helps you empathize with others. So whenever somebody's saying like, I, you know, my parents are divorced, you can say me too. Oh, you, you know, did whatever and did this and now I feel horrible. It's like, okay, I went through that too. Like me too. And it helps you empathize with others so just know that even though you know you feel like you're not far along you're in your own journey you're in your own path and god is holding your hand like throughout it all but just know that pain is always gonna be turned around and used for his like goodness and is for his glory this time last year i was like at the kind of lowest part i've ever been at and it's interesting being comfortable talking about it 12 months later because it was so uncomfortable Mm -hmm. being in it And I realized I was when I was kind of going through just like the really dark end of what the human mind can do. I remember I was like the nicest guy and I had so much empathy for other people. And I'm not the I'm I'm very introverted guy with Mm -hmm. a podcast. Why am I introverted? That's weird. No, same. (laughs) Um, I'll go into a coffee shop and I started talking to like the older people and like talking about random stuff when before I would never talk to anybody. And it's just weird when you kind of are down and out and get really low you you grow that crazy amount of empathy yeah like you need it there's um there's always a purpose to our pain that's something that i learned when i was really going through it i knew that god was gonna turn it around and make it a full circle into growth and growth is never easy you know i talk about how you know character isn't easy to build a lot of people a lot of us say that we want things but we aren't willing to put in the work and the time to like have that you know, certain characteristic or certain virtue. And I had to like humble myself a lot to recognize like, you know, I I think I mentioned in our last episode that if you asked me what I brought to the table like a year ago or two years ago, I wouldn't really be able to say much. Mm. But, you know, now by the grace of God and that he's done that work in my life still continuing, I'm definitely an unfinished product to like (laughs) excuse the dust. But (laughs) um, yeah, like I I know that now, you know, I actually can bring – things of not just value that's value in the world's eyes but it's value in God's eyes because that's what's going to matter at the end of the day like what we did with the the blood of Jesus like what we did with that opportunity to do better what we did in this flesh because salvation life in general a breath in your lungs is borrowed every day that you wake up that is a gift from God and what you choose to do with your time what you choose to do with your energy what you choose to speak or say you're you're it's a brick it's a brick building that foundation and if it's Mm -hmm. like it's if it's accepting sin or tolerating sin 
that's that sand that Gabby's talking about. We're all building a home. All of us are building a house. And we're either building it on the rock, the firm foundation, like Christ and his truths, or we're building it on our own understanding, which if it's on your own understanding, that means you're playing God and you're not God. And that's scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I just want to say you're very like prolific when you talk and also you do jujitsu. So yeah. when I, I'm like learning this side of Ari where it's honestly, I, I, I love, I love Ari right now. You're, yeah. you're amazing. <laughs> no, and I want to say Ari, like your wisdom at the age that you like yes. at your age you're yeah. 23 years old yeah. and it's like you know she's she like oh it. like i you know i'm still an unfinished product but it's like i look at you and i'm like wow like you yeah we all you know we all are still need improving on certain things in our lives but you also have to get credit where credit's due. Like you're so wise, oh. especially for your age. And it's like, I can I'm only have, imagine. I have to step out. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine like what more you're gonna do with just how you speak and like through God, like how He's gonna bless wow. you. No, I really appreciate that because I I see it in all you know our family of believers. Like I find yeah. that same wisdom and beauty, and you brand and you gabby i've spent more time with you gabby and gotten to know you as a person and the person that you are has made me love you so dearly like in such another like part of my heart because i'm like wow like i can really trust this girl she is beautiful not only on the outside stunning but her heart is actually amazing your gentleness the way you love the way you care i know like let's all just cry together (laughs) what about me what do you think about me i would i would tell you to to start a podcast but you already did you guys are killing it oh thank you um so (laughs) (laughs) overall and this is there's a shift in the universe kind of happening right now Mm -hmm. and specifically on social media because social media just exaggerates everything that's happening around us and a lot of people are coming to jesus and coming to faith right now in a mass number and it's crazy it's crazy and it's kind of odd i want to hear your guys's takes on generally everyone on social media kind of transferring over Mm. to faith-based content and believe believing being believers um it's crazy that you mentioned that because i started noticing that and i was like maybe it's just my algorithm now that i'm just like you know christian and i'm like i have a christian podcast but even like now friends that i knew and know like going back to christ and like finding god and i think that there's an awakening happening Mm -hmm. i think that god is just like he's like all right rise up like it's time yeah and i think it's just because you know the more you remove god you know who is the source of all good things the more the wickedness can increase and we have a society now who actually you know applaud sin and doesn't like the virtues that god teaches and like you can see it so clearly so i removed god but the depression has increased the anxiety has increased the fear of what tomorrow is going to look like has increased so when people get that glimpse of light which is the truth the word of god and the holy spirit is the enforcer of truth so when people are hearing these things like and actually with that open heart and mind you can't help but see like wow this is truth like this is beneficial this is actually something good and I think being having testimonies and like being able to actually have a real tangible like look or something that you can see and feel of what that looks like and people coming to God. So now I just think like these people are like seeing the light in the darkness. You know what I mean? Yeah, the seeing the light in the darkness. I like that you said that because all the evil that's going on right now that is temporary and leads to death is you can palpate it like you see like mm. doja cat going to the grammys with the witch's uh thing tatted on her forehead yeah you, you see uh sexualization of really young women being super popularized mm. with only fans and it mm. doesn't matter like it's super common that you just see an only fans link and we're like oh is what it is yeah. like you know she's just doing what she's supposed to do yeah it's like what yeah it's normalizing yeah, it. yeah. it's normalizing it and we're getting kind of desensitized too and mm-hmm. that's like the enemy's whole game you know he's good at what he does he's the agent 
ancient, I've always had a problem with that word, ancient deceiver. <laughs> he's the father of lies, like the truth is not in him. And if he's been around for centuries, you know, he's good at what he does. Like, of course, he's going to plant these things. He's going to want to make us think that sex before marriage is normal. He's going to want us to think that partying all the time is, is good and fun and just do whatever. Your life is yours. Just do what you already want to do, because I know as soon as I get you to do what you already want to do, you're going to lead yourself into destruction. The moment, you know, you have the whispers of the enemy, like saying, do this, do this, do this. And then the moment you do it, the enemy is like, how could you do that? Like, you know, like it just mm. makes you feel horrible. And you go into this whirlwind of like just confusion. And um, father I, gaslight. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me not call the devil that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> father gaslight. I hate um, that. But I think that, you know, you said something that's shining light into darkness and sin. Like, I feel like God, you know, he put boundaries of sin. Like, he's like, don't do this, don't do that. It's because, not because he wants you to, like, not live life, but it's because it's actually protecting you. And you, when you fall into sin, you realize that you get into trouble, you get mm -hmm. into devastation, whatever the case may be. And then you're like, okay, why is this happening to me? But it literally says it in the Bible. Like, don't do these things because mm -hmm. this will happen. And people just think of that like, oh, I, like, I'm not going to have premarital sex. Or I'm going to have premarital sex. And it's fine. It's fine. And then like something happens and you just feel distraught. And you're like, why did this happen? But it's like God told you not to do this. And that's why he's trying to protect yeah. his children. As a father, like any father wants to protect his children. God is our heavenly father. And he want to protect protect all of us yeah. and so, uh, i feel like that in the enemy he definitely like hides the hook it's enjoy now pay later mm. it's like no consequences to our actions i mentioned it before like our sin isn't cheap like you know our sin costed jesus everything and the reason that we have the the trials they're not even trials if you look at them as opportunities because we are in a fallen world like people are like why can't god just take it away or make the world like perfect again first like you know, we, we wouldn't, we would be robots. And second of all, we have to take accountability as humans. Like we have chosen sin. We have chosen to reject God. So now with that viewpoint, look at the trials coming into your life. Like look at what's happening, everything that you're faced with. Cause in this world, you're going to have trouble every day brings trouble of its own. Now, like how are you standing in the face of this adversity? Like, are you standing strong and firm on the truth, which you know is truth? Or are you letting the enemy magnify the problem mm -hmm. and magnify the lie and just listening to the lie and running to things that are not of God? Because, you know, when we do that, sin is selfish. Like when you're not representing Christ, like you're you're indulging in yourself and mm -hmm. it's it's not beneficial to yourself. It's destructive to yourself and it's destructive to like the people around you. Yeah, I was at Mosaic Church um with my lovely lovely girlfriend and there's this story in the bible i can't remember exactly what it's from but it's this long-winded story they often tell it around christmas and everything sounds bad it's like when the king sees the woman bathing and then sends uh oh, her david. husband david. david and uh it was so bad and everything was bad and like the daughter or one of the daughters had to sleep with the father oh, that bear okay. a child. Oh, okay. You're talking about um, Lot's. I I think it was like, yeah, niece or daughter. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I, I knew I could count on you guys for that. Yeah. But it was so bad, and then all of a sudden, from it came Solomon, mm -hmm. who was a great man, and that was the first time I kind of learned that God uses turns bad into good. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. Uh, I don't know why. It's just something clicked in me when I heard that story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, something I want to click to a lot of young men, because this really switched my mindset when mm -hmm. studying scripture, um, is the the oldest story, um, how Cain killed his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. And I never realized that Cain's lineage, if you read through the lineage, mm -hmm. it's crazy. died off mm -hmm. and wasn't on Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. So his whole entire lineage was wiped and that made me believe in like this feeling of generational curses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for me as a man you got to understand that i think about fatherly things i don't necessarily like there's a difference between being a mom and being a father and for me i read like generational curses is enough to make me act accordingly because mm -hmm. yeah. like i don't want my sons and daughters to suffer 
my lust and my wrongdoings exactly. while I'm here. Wow, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. It was this um, thing that said the the sins that you refuse to battle now are going to be like how you said like left for your kids so that's like that's all i really want to say mm -hmm. that's true that's really good and yeah. i think also um w people's actions doesn't limit god you know like there there's a reason that he uses sinners he re uses the least of people to you know shame the wise and mm -hmm. it's because you mean to have that salvation you know you need to come from from something like terrible like for me for instance like if i didn't go through everything that i went through i wouldn't be able to have the testimony that i do now i wouldn't be able to impact the people that i do now or reach out or even be relatable like gabby mm -hmm. was talking about earlier so you know anybody can be used by god it just takes saying yes yeah, yeah. it really is like that coming to the end of yourself like i think that also um like who you are as a father or a mother is mm. obviously going to greatly influence the trajectory of your children's life. Obviously, like your children are going to have their own choices and everything later on. But it, that trauma or whatever you see your parents dealing with is going to affect them. But again, having your identity in Christ, knowing who you are and whose you are, knowing that you have a heavenly father, that your earthly father may never be be perfect obviously he's human and that is something that i had to understand that you know my parents are not perfect um uh, something that pastor jay said the, like a while ago and it really like literally i went home that day and forgave my dad he said you have to understand that your parents are just big kids this is their first time living life they don't they're just trying to figure it out as you go and it's like that's so true and i literally went home and like forgave my dad over and it was like a normal day like i'm just like, like i forgive I you everything <laughs> yeah. and it's like you just yeah what your parents do do affect you and if you don't have your identity in christ it can affect you negatively and it can make you go astray and like not you know be depressed or have full of anxiety because of things that you saw yeah. but it, they say that the man who like the head of the family of the man is leading them to the altar to christ then the whole trajectory of that family will change. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't even think this is conspiracy, conspiratorial. I never can say that word, <laughs> but I don't think it's a conspiracy to say this. But the thing that's been attacked really hard in recent years is kind of like the masculinity presence mm -hmm. in a household. Oh, yeah. And that's like the number one thing where it's every Disney movie, every movie the dad's like this dumb guy who doesn't know what he's talking about ever like barbie yeah like barbie and it's so popularized to expect the disney dad to not understand his daughters at all and he's just really dumb yeah no i yeah. agree yeah i think of what you said it like gives you uh, a level of grace mm -hmm. and that forgiveness that's where that forgiveness comes from but i think it really does also highlight for me like from where i came from and how messy my childhood was i was able to forgive because god forgave me but also now I know I want to instill these these values in my children right out the womb. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I really want to not only tell them these things, but really represent these things because I just know I wouldn't have gone, I wouldn't have done a lot of the things that I did if I had that example from my dad or if I had that example from my mom, you know, so like parenting, like the parents now, like it really take that seriously. Like take your responsibility to this world seriously. You know, if you're going to be, you know, getting it on, you have to know that there could be the consequence of bringing another life into this and what you speak over them, what you say, what you show them. Children are like sponges, Mm -hmm. You know, they're soaking in and they're seeing everything you do and they're learning from it. And now you're sending that person like off into the world. Like that's mm -hmm. like a big deal. Like, yeah, you know? life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. So what you say to someone can either build them up or build them down. And we were talking to a group of kids, kind of how you were saying, like mm -hmm. the parents, you know, you gone through these things. But if they were there to like guide you and help you, then you would have just learned from them instead of going through your own like struggles. Yeah. Um, we were talking to a group of kids on Sunday and we were telling them like learn from us like knowledge and wisdom knowledge is like you know learning from yourself but wisdom is learning from others mistakes so it's like learn from your parents their parents like your, you know 
parents' mistakes and other people's mistakes, knowing that you shouldn't go down that route. Like, we were literally telling them, like, social media, everything that people, like, are glorifying nowadays is not what it seems in, like, in person like in person yeah. i've lived that it's not reality um so it's like learn from us don't get caught up in what the world says because what the world says and what god says about you like clash they will always clash and you will always fall short of the glory of god if you follow what the world says our whole life depends on if we believe what god says about us mm. wow yeah. with my nephews i do young uncle lore all the time where <laughs> They love me because I play like really hard with them. We wrestle like I'm the guy that will probably end up letting, letting them drive the car when they're 12, you know, in the, in the neighborhood only. <laughs> good uncle. Yeah. Right, good right. Uncle. And so, you know, there's things that I've just noticed my sister and brother-in-law and my and my parents, their grandparents don't teach them. And I love effect like affecting them. I love affecting the youth in, in a positive light. And it's something I've really like hyper fixated over is you know, if my nephew Roman pushes down my nephew Kane or something mm -hmm. and Kane starts crying, I'm like, you know, Get I'll force him to stand up. <laughs> yeah. Like he'll be crying <laughs> sitting there and I'll be like, stand up. I was like, I don't want to look at you crying like on the floor. That sounds harsh. But then yeah. there'll be like a deeper meaning where I'll go into saying like, yeah. you know, Mm -hmm. that's not a good look if you get pushed and didn't like it you need to go to roman and, and speak about mm -hmm. what your older brother did to you and why it wasn't right so i'll have him go up to his older brother and i'll be like yeah. you're bigger and stronger than me why would you push me down and wow. then that makes him think that's instilling yeah. communication in them yeah. like at a young age i feel like that is not even a thing anymore like communication we don't know how to communicate we just based on feelings and emotions and a lot of people like are just very emotional. So instilling communication at a young age, that, that was something I needed to learn. Like I was, a, I was, whenever I would get angry, I would just get emotional and like, you know, say a bunch of things. But like throughout the years, it's like, I wish I would have been more of a communicative person at a young age. And you doing that, I think is he's going to learn a lot from that. And it's like, it's just really needed. Yeah. It's also teaching him strength. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like no offense to whoever takes Soft. offense, but <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't know, like I just feel like we're lacking like strength, like mm -hmm. go yeah. out there, tough work, love. get it, be tough, don't let everything like hurt you, and if it does, go fix it, go do something about it, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had to learn that, like jujitsu taught me a lot about like mm -hmm. that and like, you know, being under pressure, mm -hmm. you know, and having everything coming against you, and like when you feel like you're literally suffocating, like to, to, mental that mental practice of like finding you know your strength in it to, to keep going and then now now when I'm not looking at it through the eyes of emotion now I'm looking at it the, through the eyes of like you know what t what what ways can I do to get out of this you know and I'm mm. thinking clearly now because I'm not clouded by all of my emotions like now I'm like actually seeing practical things you know if that makes sense <laughs> no it does yeah I, I was waiting for the jujitsu side of you to come out. I, I, I love the jujitsu side. Um, so uh, this is kind of a broad question, but I want to hear what's specifically weighs on your minds about this. What is the biggest factor holding back young men and women from finding Jesus mm, in today's day and age? I comfort? think a lot of it is, is comfort. I think, you know, the, the biggest thing about coming to Jesus is humility. It's really accepting that where I'm at isn't right, what I've been doing isn't right, how I think isn't right, what I grew up living my entire life this one way isn't right, you know, and even realizing, oh, wow, my actions have caused so much pain. I've hurt myself. I've hurt those around me. And it's super uncomfortable to confront that and have that humility to look at yourself in the mirror and like not like what you see, you know, and, and want to, to do better and to who, like, who are you behind closed doors? That's your character. You know, do you, do you like what you see behind closed doors? Are you the same person? Like, like, who are you? Who do you really represent? You know? So I think that would be my answer. Actually. I think <laughs> fast gratification, mm. everything's, we live in a world that nothing is slow anymore. Mm. And even TikTok, if you notice, like, at least I've noticed this, that like, if I, spend too much time on a TikTok that's already like a minute long. I get a little antsy if they're like talking too much and it's like everything is so fast now. It's at your fingertips. We live in a world that it's all quick, quick, quick. And so 
kids seeing people get famous so fast they fall into the trap of social media i think social media is such a big thing especially with young kids social media is so prominent and in their faces that they just like that's what they they admire aspire to be like you ask a kid what they want to be they say youtuber or a, a tiktoker or an instagram person or whatever the case may be it's like okay but what about doctors or like the things that are really are going to make an, uh, an impact in this world so they see everything that is glorified on social media and you see these kids like a lot of them and i'm not trying to bash like these younger generation but it's like a lot of them like at the age of like eight nine they don't really know how to read they don't know they're like they're just all stuck on their ipads like they need a young uncle yeah they yeah. need a young uncle yeah. but i think that's like what is really yeah. keeping people away from Jesus? Because again, social media and like mm -hmm. what they see around them, kind of what you said, I think in our first podcast, like you go where your itching ears want to hear. Mm -hmm. So it's like social media, their friends are also on social media and like they just think that it's okay, but they don't realize how destructive that life goes down. Yeah, I think too... Um patience because mm -hmm. that's the uh, opposite end of that instant gratification mm -hmm. is having patience because you can't expect to plant a seed watch it grow and see a harvest all in one day you know so mm -hmm. when you get out of that life of like that instant gratification when you get out of that comfort and you actually confront yourself now it's just like now you're like it's like a whole battle that you have to yeah. go mm -hmm. into like and it feels good lot. it feels good to win the battles of the war yeah. like it feels good to refrain like as soon as you actually go oh i really want to like it could be as simple as oh i really want that third cup of coffee today but i know my sleep's been horrible and i know i stay up late and i watch things i shouldn't and it's like choosing to not drink that coffee mm. feels good it feels better than drinking that coffee mm -hmm. just a ch it's you gotta switch you gotta flip to the other side exactly those are those of recognizing and seeing those the innocent pleasures you know the yeah. innocent pleasures can be just as detrimental to your well-being and your faith in your mind as much as the big ones you know everything everything plants a seed and what you water grows so whether it starts out innocent eventually it's going to grow into something that one one cup of coffee turns into two cups turn into three you know and that grows not just with coffee but you know yeah dipping my toe into sin one time then it's next time it's it's a little easier and it's a little easier same with fighting it so as the second that i fight it and stern stand firm you know now it's getting easier and easier to conquer that and to fight that mm -hmm. there's two things that i wanted to say about patience and then um we'll go into that the other point later but um patience like i always think about the fruits of the spirit that's one of the the fruits of the spirit is patience and if you look at jesus like he wasn't running everywhere trying to get to everybody he was walking and he was patient with everyone and there was even a time where like you know i th think it was martha and mary was it when like the brother was dying lazarus. yeah lazarus was dying and he took three days taking a sweet time to go to him and like you know he's dying and then he gets there and they, they're like he's dead he's dead um like where were you and jesus was like no like just be calm like i'm here now like gee, like god's timing is always perfect and a lot of time like now people like it's always fast 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 and then the second point i wanted to make was about um like just dipping into sin and like the things that you're doing like even the little small pleasures it's about pursuing purity and i think a lot of people think it's like waiting before marriage but it's like what are you listening to what are you watching what are you like who are you surrounded with like you really have to pursue purity in the, in the fullness, not just before marriage. It's like, it's just also like these other little things. Mm -hmm. What are you uh, listening and watching to that doesn't contain all the secular ends of the world? Um, okay, worship, obviously one of them. But I also, I love country. And I yeah. feel like country is like a wholesome, like they have really wholesome stuff. And I love like the beachy music and, but like, it's all very wholesome. You know, whenever you're listening to a song, and it's all about money. It's all about drugs. It's all about women and all these other things and about appearances. Like I used to listen to a lot of Doja Cat before she went a little, you know, and, you know, her, her like whenever I forgot one of her albums, but I was like literally on repeat. And, you know, I'm like a soft spoken girl, like petite. You wouldn't think that I had like this little mindset of like, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Like I can treat guys however I want. But it's because what you're listening to it's like you genuinely like start to get influenced by it 
I remember my girlfriend used to like Doja Cat a lot. <laughs> Sorry, Doja. I I used to like Doja Cat a lot too. Yeah. She just went. She's just a little too high strung, like Lil Nas and all that. But yeah. Um, my girl used to sing the song all the time. Where I was like, I got a man, but I want you. No. I got a man, and I'm like sitting there. And I'm like, <laughs> she's like singing it all day, and I'm like, like no, what are you right I'm, now. Like, yeah. I'm like. My boyfriend would be like, can you like, please change this music? Like, it's so bad. And I'm like, why? It's just so like, it's what's on the radio. Like, it's so like, yeah. it's Doja Cat. I didn't mean anything by it. But like now I'm like, I look at the song and like what it's saying. And when you whenever you're saying things out loud, loud, like kind of what I was saying, like life and death is either, what was it? Life and death. And the power of the tongue. Yeah, the power of the tongue. So it could either build you up or break you down. And if you're like proclaiming these things and saying these yeah. things out loud, like it can really like it has energy like that stuff has energy and it can really like yeah. do that you're planting seeds mm -hmm. definitely and i think it just is what kind of lenses do you have on when you're looking at these things because you know when i was trying to i guess get out of the secular stuff i definitely got into the country a lot too and i think it was two things that I was feeling because I was like, you know, one, this is wholesome. It's good. But I'm like, you know, I think country also like idolizes like relationships a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, wow, this is good and wholesome. I definitely think like what Gabby's saying, I think what the fruit it's producing and then also like the lenses that you're looking at it with. Yeah. Um, just like if you're taking it just for, you know, to speak that I want a man, I want you and you're going and doing it is like one thing but like how are you like how are you seeing it and how are you letting it affect your mind and how you act and like your perspective and you can know a song by just looking at the lyrics what it means mm -hmm. like you know i'm not saying you can't listen to any kind of song but it's like if it like what fruit is it bearing like what kind what kind of song is it is it full of lust is it full of drugs is it full of money like what is it about mm -hmm. and yeah, there's a Bible verse that says with everything that you do, whether you eat, whether you drink, do it all for the glory of God. So that's what got me to stop listening to. I, I like trust. I, I see the fun in it. I get it. Sin looks fun. It's like hearing that stuff is fun. Like the beat is good. But I was like, you know, if I want to live a life that's honoring God, I have to just sacrifice. So like even the word sa like sacrifice or to suffer for something, you know, or having a passion for something, it actually means like to suffer for it. So I wanted to love God and I wanted to honor God. So that meant let me suffer for it. Let me like remove mindsets. Let me like stop listening to music that I thought I liked or that I do like but shouldn't like. And, you know, the movies that I'm watching and something that really stuck with me is if I want a full time God, I can't be part time Christian. Like, how am I going to be a part-time Christian and wanting a full-time God? Like, going out and doing whatever, listening whatever I want, and then being like, oh, God, where are you at? Bless my plans. You know, because the whole thing with God is the more that you love Him, the more He will start to align your perspective with His. And now, the things that you once craved, you're not even craving anymore. Yeah. There's a verse, literally about today, saying, it says... If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we, we confess our... No, this is not it. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait. That's probably a good one, too. Though. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it was different. Hold on, let me find it. No worries. Um, No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. And it's just like... When people say, like, how I used to say, like, oh, yeah, I know God. I'm a Christian. It's like, okay... But do you actually know him? Like, are you actually letting him into your life and transforming you? Because you can say you know him, but like actually having him in your life, everything will change. Like I used to be very immodest. I used to dress very provocatively mm -hmm. and I would curse a lot. I would listen to all these kinds of music. But once I gave my life to Christ, like you said, like he starts pastoring you and like kind of showing you the way like you and those things will show like when you have god in your life it will show the fruits of the spirit will show so it's like yeah yeah like, and there's another verse that says like don't continue to lay down the foundation of repentance i think a lot of us that's taking advantage of god's grace something that i used to do a lot like you know since i'm forgiven since i have this new life i'm accepted into jesus now it's like a free pass to sin mm -hmm. like that's not the case at all like it should lead you to want to because that 
you know, real belief is followed by action. If I truly believe in what the Bible's saying, if I truly believe in God and know what he did for me, then my obedience is just should naturally follow. So if it's not, that means I'm in willful rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. And how can I like, you know, people always get mad at God for these things, but I'm just like, you know, can you blame him if you were a parent and your kid was constantly being disobedient and then wanted you to take care of all their bills and care for them and all these things like why no yeah. well, <laughs> i'm trying to think what's what uh well i kind of do know what sin i struggle with the most which i think a lot of men can relate and it has a lot to do with just what the world kind of throws at us in like every way and so it's probably lust and like premarital sex mm -hmm. for men and women alike um, I think that's the most, like, that's the biggest one you can point at. Yeah. And uh, I just want to let young men know who are listening to this, because that's dominantly who my audience is, is that desexualizing your brain really will free you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I never realized how sexual my brain's been forever, even, you know, like, to the point where it's hurting my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm sexualizing her rather than like loving her. Mm -hmm. Like, am I, am I like, am I just wanting sex or am I actually being a husband, like a yeah. future husband? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I've been really confronted with that for yeah. a while now. Yeah. And uh, it's really freed me. It, it, it doesn't happen all, all at once, yeah. but like slowly I've noticed, like I don't think about yeah. that stuff mm -hmm. anymore. That's so yeah. awesome. Nice. First of all, congratulations. Yes. Like that Thank is you. that is so like <laughs> that is really, really hard in a world that is filled with lust and oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, pornography and all that stuff. Like it's it's really awesome that you're, you know, trying to pursue that. And purity, like I said, is not easy, but you gain people think of purity as something being taken away from you. Um and I see it as like you gain so much yeah. when you're with someone, you actually know who they are. And when you take sex away from that, like from that relationship, you realize like, okay, do I really like this person? Because mm. sex like clouds your judgment and people don't realize like, you know, they do makeup, sex or whatever the case may be. Like they get in arguments, they do it. And then you don't realize you have to go back to your relationship and fix the problems that you have. A lot of people like resort to having sex just to make things better. But it's like it actually clouds your judgment and you can't you don't realize like if you even like this person. That's why God says like don't ha don't have sex in like with outside of the covenant of marriage. Yeah. Um, that's why there's boundaries. There's things like that. But I'm really, really proud of you because it's really, really hard. It, it was hard to realize that it's been in the coping mechanism for so long. Mm -hmm, exactly. Like, I used sex for so long to overcome like personal struggles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I was confronted it and solved it in other ways rather than mm -hmm. just like yeah. effing it out of me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think something that really helped me was realizing that love gives and lust takes. So I had to come to that realization that I can't even really say I love you if because if I know sin separates us from God and I know that sexual immorality is a sin and it separates us and it's honestly a sin that we commit against our own body. How can I be that stumbling block for you and then say that I love mm. you? Like mm -hmm. I, I, I clearly, I, I clearly don't because if I loved you, I would care no matter what it costs to lead you to God, to, to protect your purity to protect your faith to protect the foundation that you're trying to lay and that's just that delayed gratification there is always more benefit in delayed gratification than there is an in instant gratification so mm -hmm. awesome and pursuing <laughs> purity i think really sets us apart and we're all uniquely created and be like we are all uniquely created so being unique is what sets us apart from the rest of the world um and also with just like my boyfriend and I decided to to pursue purity and we just uh, know how yeah we just know how to like really care for the other person especially when in like the really tough days like the other day I was telling Ari like he literally came and read like the first chapters of John for me um, until I fell asleep because I was going through something like I still go through things and so he like read that to me just to remind me of who I am and whose I am and like just don't forget my purpose and my identity like things around this world like will 
you know, come crashing down. But as Mm. he like you open that Bible and it's like the living word and it speaks to you. And it was like such a beautiful moment that I've never experienced. And it's like, you know, I used to like have other boyfriends that, you know, just weren't really the best, but (laughs) <laughs> not the best <laughs> but like you know weren't for the best <laughs> weren't for the best like they there were some they were good but anyways um but like <laughs> but um, it, led, it led you to here yeah exactly yeah. but um but with ricky like he really like taught me how to love someone actually like knowing how to talk to them and like remind them of who remind me of who i am so yeah that's gonna speak life because now you have like like intentional advice I, th- I can't think about how many times being in a relationship or friendship you know and like I was struggling or hurting and they didn't come to me with like biblical truth they came to me with you know well you'll be okay you got this you're strong but in what <laughs> like in what yeah. like it wasn't actually like helping me it wasn't actually impacting me what started impacting me was when I was hurting and struggling and I went to the word and I saw like God says you know you're fearfully and wonderfully made like every hair on your head is numbered you are more than a conqueror in Christ I have a plan for you to prosper you not to harm you declares the Lord you know real plans for a hope and a future and that I can see it like I could see so clearly when I started believing in that and that what it was doing to my heart and what it was doing to how I treated people, how I loved people, the advice that now I give and like the boldness that came with that too and speaking up and telling people the truth even when, you know, it's not the nice, like it doesn't feel so good. There's another verse that says, um, wounds from a friend is better than kisses from an enemy. You know, like love tells the truth and real love is always going to speak up for the truth. And if we don't know the truth because we haven't put the time in to know what that looks like and know God's word, we can't speak that over anybody's life. And we can't truly help someone and lead them to the one thing that can. Like, I can't give you peace, but I know who can. I can't give you joy, but I know who can. I can't give you a purpose, but I know who can. And constantly pointing everybody back to that. Mm -hmm. Worldly advice is pretty hilarious and yeah just hearing it's like i saw this funny tiktok videos where it's like when your atheist friend is giving your other friend advice and it's just (laughs) a funny sound and it's yeah it's so funny hearing worldly advice something um i've really taken note of is uh giving good advice to my friends especially when it comes to like relationship struggles because before i used to be very pro the guy like you know yeah. classically leave her dog yeah like <laughs> oh she disrespected you for real yeah but now i've always now i'm speaking from an angle of always on the behalf of them being together mm-hmm. like not saying not giving and completely the option to like oh that's hard to get over mm-hmm. it's probably gonna be done bro yeah instead yeah. Just being like well this oh, is you gotta figure this out because you're going to be together and you got to figure out why she feels that way. And it's probably because yeah. of this. Wow. And the underlying thing she wants is this. <laughs> you know, we're all <laughs> called to be leaders, men and women. So young women and women in general and men. So you doing that is you stepping into your purpose as a leader. Like we need men to step up to give good advice. We need men who are actually applying it to their life. Same way, we need women who are actually doing it because the world needs it. I haven't seen that so much as to when I really started taking my faith serious. Like, you know, we all plant seeds, but I've actually been in the position where I can watch the harvest. And that has been the most wonderful thing to me. That has given me the strength to actually stay true to my convictions and like actually be a leader and try to lead like the I, of course I fail in a lot of areas but you know like just taking it seriously and, and seeing that it's actually so beneficial and so good because now your friends they're not you know hook up shack up break up you know now they're actually seeing oh real love it stays true it stays firm it tries everything else before you just don't just give up on it you know a lot of the times like that worldly advice that we're talking about if you're having relationship struggles It's never like, oh, well, are you doing something wrong? It's normally always attacking that other person or always just like, it's easier just to leave them, try someone new. Like, honestly, you can find someone else that doesn't deal with that. But in reality, yeah, they might not deal with that, but they're going to deal with something else. So you're always going to have a set of problems. Yeah. And love isn't an emotion. Like love is a choice. Um, 
if you have love as an emotion, the moment that person upsets you is the moment that you the love that you thought you had for them is gone. So, yeah. yeah. It's about like sacrificially serving and that's what relationships and marriage like a lot of people go into marriage and relationships like what can I get or how can this benefit me but really it's a it's a a foundation or it's a a space where you can truly learn to sacrificially serve and when your two people are sacrificially serving each other nothing can break you apart and you know as humans you're going to have days where your partner isn't sacrificially serving you back and it's not going to feel good that's why know your why know that your your foundation is for God and even if your person is at fit 30% and you're filling in the rest you're joyfully willfully gladly do that and fill in for them because that's love in action. Yeah, I've I used to have this really negative trait in my brain where I would want to control even people's reactions, specifically even my girlfriend's reactions where she might not have had the emotion I was looking for when I did something or this. And then I would like go down this route of being upset about it. And then now I'm having like this negative like loop. And now uh, the, there's a saying uh, that's really a change of mindset. Mindset is perfectly loving uh, an imperfect person. And I've just decided I'm going to love you no matter what. And I'm not going to try and control and make you this like perfect wife and girlfriend all the time because yeah. it's just never going to happen. I used to have that problem too, where like I wanted them to react a certain way. And if they didn't, I'd be like, what was that? Like, why yeah. aren't, aren't you happy? Or like, why isn't like you're, you know, you're not as happy as I thought you were going to be. The, the, <laughs> the big things and the little things, you know, I think it's important to love people exactly where they're at and like, you know, forgive because Christ forgave you love because I have loved you first. Yes. But there's also that line where you have to recognize if it's taking from you like if you're not able to be that person because of the fruit that it's bearing, like if it's bearing like fear anxiety or depression or you know i'm always like anxious or what like you're always like responding like you feel like we're on opposite teams you know that's where being like equally yoked also comes in so i feel like a lot of the times people on like the flip side of staying stay mm -hmm. too long where they're not called to be because of their their fear of leaving and you know i really feel for people going through the mm -hmm. same thing because i see it all the time i see people with such light in them get stuffed out because yeah. mm -hmm. they're not in an environment where they're able to like speak the truth and speak life and to me that's like obviously having god in the center you know so yeah i think yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um first there's two things i've learned my advice i don't know if you're still struggling with that i don't think you said you were kind of or what controlling yeah, uh, like, like kind of reactions. controlling. Yeah, I just For sure. learned. I, it pops up and I yeah. go, no. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like learning to just let them, like let them be them. And it's you, like how you react on it. And again, going back to communication, just communicating like, hey, like, you know, I, I wish that you maybe showed a little bit more happiness or whatever the case may be, like just communicating. And then two is understanding that your source is not in the relationship because that perfect Perf that person is not perfect we're all imperfect humans and so your source is god who is perfect and he's always consistent he's the same in the past and present and forever like he's always going to be the same so your source has to be on something stable and consistent like god mm -hmm. instead of a, a relationship or yeah. another person because now you're putting unrealistic expectations on that person yeah. to be your happiness and to be your joy mm -hmm. and it's like a lot to carry it's a big burden to put yeah it's, it is a burden yeah i hope sarah's watching this right now <laughs> i love you baby yeah. <laughs> you're my girl <laughs> my friend uh was telling me um so this is a different kind of topic mm -hmm. but he told me to be a, a sheepdog amongst men rather than a high strung like wolf and he brought up that if everybody was like high strung wolves, it would just be forest full of wolves attacking each other mm -hmm. and sheepdog protect the sheep. And they're always organized. They never act out of line until a wolf comes. And then that's like time to step in. 
my friend's agnostic, but like the, that's pretty. He, 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 like, like, that's you're really, saying really, something really pretty beautiful. biblical there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Write that down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. New version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly to that point. Um, look at the example that we're given. Look at how um, loving but stern God is. You know how gentle but ferocious he can be mm. it's it's both and that's where like balance comes in meekness is power under control mm. and it says the meek will inherit the earth mm -hmm. so having knowing that you could knowing i could you know puff up my chest i could you know dominate do whatever but i i'm gonna put keep it under control and use it in increments or use it when it's necessary yeah knowing who your god is is understanding who you are and understanding who you are, you realize where you belong and that you're just created for a purpose and you no longer have to prove yourself anymore um, because you just realize that you just you just are like and also Jesus, I feel like really models is the best model for masculinity. Like you see how he was with the people. He was so s sweet and loving and but he was also stern and he told them like how it was. He told them the truth, but he he was so sweet about it. He, it came from a place of love. Mm -hmm, yeah. And if you are like a person that is kind of like a wolf mentality, it's not from a place of love. It's a, it's from a place of like pride and boastfulness and like ego. Yes. It's it's not from love. And Jesus was love. He That's all he was, was love. And all he wanted was the truth to be spread around the world and for people to understand that they no longer have to prove anymore they just belong because that's because god created them for a purpose and for a reason so you no longer have to prove anymore i always think about the era that we're at the time mm -hmm. that we're at like so the the years before christ like god was silent and they, they were just stuck in their you know hopelessness they had they didn't no, have the like, Bible. Yeah. Like we are so blessed. blessed. We are blessed. <laughs> blessed by the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we're seriously so blessed because like we actually have like truth to 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 look at. Even the disciples, they just had to like live it. We are in an, an area of our life where we have like true salvation and we can understand repentance and we can understand why and like we can understand what jesus actually did for us on the cross like people use the name jesus like no one knows really who jesus is that like, we use it as a curse word like saying like mm. jesus christ and stuff like that and it's crazy yeah. because if you knew like the pain that he endured so that you could be made right by god to made justified by god like that is a gift that no money can buy nothing of this world can give you and it's sad because i see us so often like taking that you know the gift of salvation i compare it to an all-white outfit mm -hmm. you know we have this chance we have this and then we go roll in the bud or we get this nice gift and then we stick it right under our bed instead of like walking in that purpose and like walking in you know what scripture says and actually like you know loving mm -hmm. god <laughs> yeah there's always that shower after doing something a little disgraceful and mm -hmm. you're in the shower you know washing yourself <laughs> and you're like oh my gosh that's like, <laughs> something's gotta change soon like yeah. i gotta you just feel disgusted you're yeah. like oh by the way meek mill is changing his name to meekness meal oh no, me yeah, yeah. i like that no but it would be insane that would be it's not happening but that'd be oh fire. i told you i'm gullible <laughs> brand uh, no same i was like nobody that's actually crazy yeah. well, that would be crazy Nicki minaj like <laughs> Nicki just did uh a christian song she i don't has like a christian okay. and I it's actually fire like i think it shows yeah. a feature in it yeah it's good yeah i think she reverse i was like okay yeah okay. she knows what's up that's so i was just telling my friend she she you dropped off the laptop yes or yesterday morning uh i'm doing some editing for their podcast and whatnot and i'm like it was just me and you kind of alone and i was like if ari really wanted to <laughs> i was like she could probably choke me out right now and as a guy, you got to understand that I just think about things like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. think about it all the time, too. Yeah. Not That's choking you out, fine. but I. Oh, OK. I'm like, <laughs> <It's> like that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to choke Brant. Yeah. No, but like, I don't know. It's kind of fun to Sweet. walk uh, like uh, walk around and say, like, you know, I, I wanted to do this thing where like a hundred bucks if you can tap me, you know, in a minute. That'd be like sick. and just sit on the beach and just with a sign. I saw Ari at the um, at the coffee shop. She asked me to go to jujitsu with her, and I'm like, 
I I think I would actually die. Like I am such a like a petite like soft spoken girl, and no, no, I'm like I'm you're scared. Good. You're gonna choke me out. It's weird because jujitsu's saved and changed a lot of men the same way like Christianity <laughs> kind of has. Really? Uh, you think jujitsu? I don't know much about it. About jujitsu? Mm-hmm. I thought you were about Christianity. I'm like. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, Okay. (laughs) What has jujitsu specifically done for you when it comes to the carryover to life in Christianity? Um, I think discipline. Like, I think that's the most discipline and um, dealing with pain, getting stronger, uh, learning technique, patience. Like, it takes 10 years to get a black belt. Like, I'm so far down the total way. It brings humility. Mm. Like, you can't expect to walk in like a lot of this is what like the common theme that you know not just me but like people in the sport will tell you that as soon they'll go for a week and not be as good as i think they thought that they would be and they'll they'll quit i for the first six months of my jujitsu career got mopped but like i was literally used me to mop the floors like i woke up with sore ribs like every single day where it hurt to breathe but i'm like you know gotta get it gotta go because i saw every time i did do it like a little thing that was good i was like you know momentum let's go (laughs) we're getting stronger yeah so that's that's probably what it carried yeah yeah i love that you do jujitsu i think that's so cool i want to talk about so you guys do your bible study in the classroom in a classroom at real life Mm -hmm. um real life is a big church here in central florida and they have a bunch of other locations probably a lot of you go to a real life church um but uh so there's pastor jay there's a couple other pastors that have really supported you guys and helped you with Mm -hmm. your walk in walk in faith uh i just kind of want to hear who's helped you guys the most for me pastor mike um i actually met him so funny so i was with a boyfriend at the time and we walked into first watch and pastor i mean pastor mike and his wife were sitting there and they do the youth adult or they did at the at the time the young adult service and they were looking at me and they're like at in my boyfriend at the time they're like i really want to invite them to the youth service but they didn't end up doing it but for some reason i felt called like i was so lost in the world but i felt called to go to that young adult service and i went and he came up to me after service he was like i saw you at first watch but i don't know why it just didn't but I wanted to invite you to the young adult. And he was like, I'm so happy you're here, all this stuff. But I was also going through a lot and I was like kind of going back and forth. But now like him and his wife have like always supported me. Even when I was, I moved to Miami, they were like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Like you shouldn't do that. But they were so like not judgmental. They were so understanding and they actually came from Miami. They lived in Miami. They grew up there. But like they knew the environment, right? They knew how super superficial it was and coming back like they were just so happy to see me and they were like, you know, you seeing the change in you like the last time I talked to them, they were like you just changed so much. You're like a different person and they've always like spoken life into me and my boyfriend now like Ricky and they're just like you've it's just so amazing what god does but yeah pastor mike beautiful. and his wife stephanie they're That's watching <laughs> yeah no they he they're both like and they have grown so much too mm-hmm. i remember, I remember you. now he's the lead campus pastor of yeah uh, or- orlando, orlando. Hey. he's yeah. been he's on it <laughs> he's um, so good i think for me of course pastor justin um he just helped me get to where i'm at because when i was like 19 i remember watching two three services like a day when i was like i i need like he was like feeding my soul like he was the reason that i came to church and it was actually an ex at the time who like brought me there to like really like start going back to church and i was like wow after that relationship had gone like he just was always speaking life like he did it in such like a wonderful way that just like really equipped me and then once you know life happened and I was and I ended up working there I met one of their so she's the connections pastor who I actually ended up becoming the connections coordinator for her name's Tisha and she was like a spiritual mother for me like she was the one that was just like like taught me the word I've never really heard the word leader leadership like 
until working there and she spoke that over me and she told me what it means and then I watched it happen like I watched like how she grows these these groups like she leads all of the change makers like all of the volunteers we call them change makers who make that church happen like the church wouldn't even be the church without all of them and she's the one that raises up leaders to lead each of those teams and like the things that she was speaking over me I was like like wow thank you so much because now I, I started understanding it and actually wanted to walk in it and it changed my whole trajectory of my life changed my whole perception of life and how I like see myself so I have to give like a big thanks to her that is so beautiful thanks. it's beautiful seeing a leader and somebody further ahead teach somebody to become a leader rather than just like Mm -hmm. treating you just like a student the entire time mm -hmm. i coach a group of high school kids uh with basketball mm -hmm. and it's kind of the first time i've ever been looked at in this like you you know a lot way and we want to like learn from you and whenever you get the ball in practice we're like waiting to see the cool thing you do so it's just so really cool, cool construct yeah i love that i know and there's this kid named <laughs> who when he first got on the basketball team he was just very loud and, and very unorganized. And I slowly just kept cutting deeper and deeper to teach him how to be more organized and, and quieter and slower. And the way I did that was by making him a leader amongst his teammates. Mm. Uh, so a leader teaching a leader, teaching somebody to become a leader is just a beautiful thing. And now at the end of every practice, what I do is... I put the ball on his chest and we would do a 1v1. I would be on defense once and I'd be on offense once. And I would just mop the floor with him every time. Aww, past three so practices. Yes. Aww. Past three practices in a row, he beat me. Wow. And no I could just see in his way. face, it's just like a different, like sort of overcoming thing. Yeah. And I'm like, Your first off, I'm a little so upset beautiful. that he's beating me. <laughs> But it's beautiful. But it's like, now, that's yeah. the point. Yeah. You want right. them to be better than you. Like the same way when we have children, like you want them to be better than you. Like that's why you're teaching them. Oh, and they will be. I feel yeah. like that's how it works. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, uh, us humans, so we have some stuff yeah. uh, instilled in us that are pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like people that like are leaders, but want they, they only teach them and make them stay as students again comes from a place of pride and not from love yeah so he better stop I, I better at least beat him once though i'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's pride you got this I yeah know. still like, go <laughs> crush him the third one kind of hurt me yeah <laughs> no way shouldn't have got it but <laughs> now it's like time. on you're gonna start like pushing him over and stuff like <laughs> so now it's gonna get dirty <laughs> that's so funny like he comes to practice too and he has uh um by the way pj bleep out his name whenever i talk about him i don't really want him on the show just in case but he comes to practice with uh like a mac miller shirt and he has like dangling cross earrings and stuff <laughs> you know i'm like i kind of know what he's going through yeah. when it comes yeah. to just, like, growing up because he's a high school kid I don't, it is I don't know. so funny uh, it's so funny how you can tell when somebody's going through something because you were just there like you were just you were going through that and yeah you know, that's crazy thinking about high school and like everything we we're what were we doing we were just like oh yeah just trying to make it every day just uh. like I didn't like life. it. I, I no. <laughs> I didn't either. I did not like <laughs> it. I no. I like. There was like a, a a good period of time where I was like crying every day, yeah. and I was like, "Mom, please don't make me go. <laughs> like, Aww. don't make me go." And she's like, "I would. You'll be fine." <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would skip school and go to Donut King. And then try to bribe the person that opens the gates to donuts, and they would always open the gates, and I'm like, "This is awesome." But I literally like. I, I did not like high school. I didn't like, yeah, it was just not. I it liked. Not it. <laughs> I think I, I I did like high school. The only thing I didn't like was waking up. Mm. Oh. Early isn't it to crazy bed and how, early to rise. Isn't it crazy how we would wake up at 7 a.m. and didn't leave until like 2 to 3 p.m. and then go home and do homework? Yeah. And, and then I would, I would go to like Chick-fil-A at 3. Yeah. 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 I would work out. I remember I was on the schedule because I didn't have like a 6th and 7th period. I would go to the gym. I'd have a gym bag. I would go to the gym, shower there, and then go straight to Chick-fil-A. 
And that it's crazy when you're young that that works for so long. Yeah. Now that I'm older, it's like I choose peace. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I choose being home. Yeah. Out of the mix. Definitely. That is yeah. so funny. I like yeah. So I feel like I'm like both sides because at, I did not like high school, but at the same time, I guess I did. But I I guess more so I didn't like. I didn't like how like it's so much pressure. Like and I feel like a lot of kids go through that nowadays, like in school and the pressures of school and trying to like find your place and trying to fit in and like yeah. my little brother was just talking like about that. He was like, you know, if I say something wrong we can edit it out, right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, why are you are you opting your little brother? Is he gonna go to jail? <laughs> um, my no. little brother was like selling drugs. At yeah, school. selling drugs. No, he's actually that boy has more wisdom than I ever met in yeah, a young he sometimes man. go to the Bible study. Yeah, he like, makes me I'm like I was not like that at your age. But um he was just telling me how like even like identity and sexuality is such a big thing nowadays. Like, you know, like not knowing like the gender, mm. whole gender thing going on. He's just like people make fun of me because I'm not gay. No wow. Way. I used to get made fun of because people be like, You're, You're gay. gay. Yeah. That is uh, crazy. No yeah, way. and he he was like, Man, it's like it's really hard. I feel very alone and I'm like, you know, little brother, like walk differently, talk differently, yeah. be different because what's going to matter is, you know, when you die, you're going to hear well done, well done, good and faithful servant because you stayed firm. And like now you can be an example because, you know, the battle's not with flesh and blood. If anyone is like lost or innocent or, or doing something that, you know, we know isn't right or we don't personally like agree with because of what the Bible says, it's just like, you know, they're just trapped in the sin too. Like we, yeah. my, that might not be my sin, but I know what my sin was and it was just as ugly, you know? So just stand yeah. firm, bro. We're meant to be made, made. We're meant to be set apart. Yeah. yeah. Just like, just repeat that over him. Be like, just remind yourself of your identity. The youth is uh, definitely under attack. Um, but I think, it, I think that's preventable by uh, us all being good parents. Mm-hmm. Um, because the household is really sh- way stronger than, than yeah. the school. Like, I, you could tell me anything at school. I'm not going to listen to what you're saying. Yeah. Even if yeah. it was on the good side of things. Like, even if, like, Pastor Jay came into my class, it's like, what do you know? Yeah. Are you? yeah. I'm going like, to learn about this stuff at the house. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like if everybody, like, if you're in school and everybody's talking about it, making fun of you, and, like, also your teachers mm. are saying all these things. As a kid, I mean, I feel like I remember how I was as a kid, like, I'm gullible now. Like imagine back then, like yeah. I'm like na- naive yeah. and like I'm believing everything. And it, it's people that I trust, like your teachers and authorities. Mm-hmm. And like you think that they would be telling you truth, like what this. So it's like, yeah, I feel like yeah. the youth is definitely under attack for sure. I feel like we don't care as much either. Like we see people struggling or see people going down a bad path and we're like, Oop, don't want to touch that. Mm -hmm. that's going to take a lot of time that's going to take that's going to be an inconvenience to me but our heart should be for people like our heart should be you know I know what it's like to be there I'm going to pour my time into you even though it's not the most like convenient thing but I know it's the right thing you know and I there's like the saying you know at every corner just do the right thing and when I heard that I'm like man that's so simple just do the right thing and it, and it actually like clicked in my head, like for everything, just do the right thing. And it makes, cause I feel like even with sin and temptation and all that, like we're always thinking like 10, 12 steps ahead, but really it's just like what's happening right in front of you. So every time an opportunity comes or every time you're faced with something, you know, just do the right thing and yeah. the rest is going to follow automatically. I haven't been a giver for so long. I haven't. I've been so selfish for a long time. And what I've realized recently was giving and being a servant has really kind of freed my brain recently. Mm -hmm. We're doing things that aren't beneficial to myself, but only beneficial to somebody else. Mm. Like, of course, I've always had like chivalry when it comes to like opening doors, but that's the bare minimum, bro. And probably I was doing that for so long because I wanted the grandma to be happy like Mm -hmm. to look at me like happily. So at the end of the day, it wasn't a narcissistic path yeah but now actually going out of my way giving up like oh i gotta get this work done today and doing something for free or doing something nice has really freed me yeah think about what you did for that young man that you're coaching like that you you saw that you could have easily just been or like pastor tisha with me she could have just been like oh wow you know i see that or 
you know, but I'm not going to pour any time to it. And now you're raising up someone who is going to be able to make an impact and take what he learned from you and give that to someone else. That's what being selfless does. It's like a web that you're Mm -hmm. and like you're cultivating, you're starting to plant and you're starting to grow and you're starting to actually going to be able to like see a harvest in the end. And helping others is not when it's convenient for you, not when you've had your cup of coffee, not when you've gotten enough of sleep. It's when you see there's a need, you go and do it. You put others first. And like, again, you helping out with that little kid, um, you probably had days that you didn't want to go do it. Like you're like, oh, like this is, I had a lot going on that day, but like you went and did it. And then you see the reward. Like you see how much you're impacting somebody's life. Serving others is how you are impacting others around you and putting yourself, like denying yourself, picking up your cross and following him. Like you, you do it for everyone else. You stop looking at yourself and looking towards others and towards God. Yeah. We have to be really careful because like, a couple months ago, like I was getting real comfortable, you know, I was like putting down my cross every once Mm. in a while. And it was really with that helping, you know, I was really focused, starting focus on myself because I had a lot of new things happening in my life. And I remember walking out of Walgreens and there was this old man and he was like walking with his groceries and stuff. And in my head, the Holy Spirit was like, go help go help, go pick that up, go take that from him. And I was like, nah, like I ignored it. I ignored God. And I ended up getting in my car and starting to reverse. And I look over and I see his cart falling down the hill, you know? And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) and even, even then for a split moment, like this other old lady was in her car, saw it happening and was like trying to honk to get his attention. But they, they, you know, elderly is a little slower to move. And even then I was like, I was watching the car and like, I don't know, something just slapped me in the face. God literally, it was God. He <laughs> smacked me and he's like, if you don't go help right now. <laughs> like, yeah. right? And I remember like leaving my car halfway out the parking spot and putting it in parking, finally helping. And I got in my car and I was thinking and I was like, I can't even believe that I wasn't going to that, how far like my mind was getting, how like self-consumed that I was getting, that I literally like Pastor Justin always says, see a need, fill a need. Like, and that's what I was always trying to live by. And like, you know, if we get comfortable and if we're not careful, like it's really easy to get sucked back into like yourself. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not in your word and in prayer and not having, not being filled by the Holy Spirit, you're going to be filled by other things like yourself or your desires by sin, whatever the case may be. You have that, you leave that space for something else to come and fill it. So it's like you constantly have to like, and it's hard. Some days like I don't want to, but it's like you just do because you know that that's where your foundation is. Because the moment you start putting down your cross, you start having this mentality like, oh, I don't want to do that right now. Like I don't want to do it. And then you start getting into places that you're like, okay, how did I get here? And then you look back and you're like, oh, it's because I stopped Mm. like, like getting in the word and praying and like putting God first. Yeah. It bleeds into everything that you do. Like Mm -hmm. what you, what you do in anything shows in everything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times we come to God with a cup already full. We come to God, you know, this is our cup and it's this full and we leave this much room for God. And God's like, how can I do anything with that? That's why he says, deny yourself, die to yourself. And that's not easy, but pick up your cross. Like come to me with an empty cup. So now I could fill your cup. So now out of that overflow, you can give to other people. Because if you're filling your own cup, eventually you're going to be depleted. And that's why, you know, you only have so much peace to give. You only have so much joy to give. Eventually, Mm -hmm. like you're going to run out of it because you're not rooted to the ground you're not rooted to the the well that never runs dry you know if you're not rooted mm-hmm. in god the source like when someone comes and takes your fruit you're gonna try to fight to get it back but if you're rooted in god you'll just grow more fruit you know yeah you two are becoming really good role models for mm-hmm. a lot of young women and the social media presence that you guys gained in different ways and translating and changing the brand over to such a positive thing just shows how God can turn bad into good. And this, I want to say the versions of you guys right now are so beautiful and strong. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm literally getting chills right now because I don't know. It's just, it's amazing to see strong women and my girlfriend's the same way. And she's changed me by being an example for me. So not only are you going to affect young women, but you're going to affect grown men when they see women like you, they, Grown men who are subscribed to OnlyFan girls 
are gonna mm-hmm. see a podcast clip from you guys and be like, oh, like, yeah, this is what I like. Yeah. Maybe I need to be different too. Yeah, and it's crazy going to a norm like OnlyFans. How normalized that is. Like guys yeah. are okay with their girlfriends showing off whatever you know they have going on like into yeah. the world and that's not why that's not why god created us it's all about the you know the covenant of marriage and how beautiful it was i always go back to like how jesus like men are supposed to love um women their wives as jesus loved the church imagine if jesus was like like you know glorifying other things and like going to you know just you know giving into sin and like mm-hmm. temptation it's like no he, he loved the church he literally died for it yeah men are supposed to do the same with their wives oh yeah. yeah you heard that men <laughs> do it listen up listen to these girls yeah. yeah what should we expect from you guys in the near future when it comes to she's fruitful videos anything planned right now specifically Mm, so we got a couple good episodes about a drop and um just like you know more bible stuff but then we're also thinking soon to maybe start getting into dabbling in merch merchandise yeah Yeah. merchandise merchandise. we're so excited we're gonna start designing things soon is uh the first drop probably gonna be like a nice like heavy white tee with she's fruitful on it because i will wear that yeah Maybe. I'll wear that on the show. Or some socks. <laughs> socks. Or some socks. No, I'm kidding. No. Yeah. <laughs> you said I like uh, tote bags. I love socks. No, but um, probably tote bags or a, t- a t-shirt. You've yeah. said so many amazing things this entire podcast, and the best thing you said is that you love socks. <laughs> I do. I love, I love socks. socks. I do. I love socks too. Socks and almond milk. Like whenever somebody. <laughs> what? Almond milk. <laughs> but I love almond milk. Like it's good. Almond milk's good. Yeah. Oat milk. Oat milk with coffee. I like oat Sorry. milk. Sorry. Y'all Tea. gotta stay over there. <laughs> You know what? Thanks for uh, <laughs> make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and viewing. I'll leave a comment. Uh, I'm bye. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs>